Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Sitting down here in the basement bait shop and we have had just a incredibly cold, rainy summer day. We've had such a drought for such a period of time that it actually is really nice to get some rain and see things starting to get a little bit of green color in them. But man, it, we went from really hot to really wet, really cold. So I figured I'd do a couple of videos down here in my basement. And you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about had to do with reaction baits. I talk all of the time on this channel about how important it is to create reaction strikes out of the fish. And there's a lot of really good ways to do it. You know, you're talking about deflecting your bait off objects, changing up the real speed that you're retrieving the bait with, imparting movement with your rod tip, lots of different things that you can do to create reaction strikes from the fish. But there are definitely baits that create more reactionary strikes because of the movement and the motion of the bait versus other more finesse style baits. So I wanted to walk you through what are potentially my five favorite baits for generating reaction strikes to the point of even giving you the exact color so that you can take it out and maybe get a few extra bites when you give it a try. These baits are all very, very good. I don't know that these are necessarily going to surprise anybody, but I'm going to give you a breakdown as to where and when I like to use them. And I think it may open up your eyes to maybe some other places that you can use them on your local lakes. Before I share with you these five baits, though, I do want to remind you if you're looking to support the channel and you need to make some tackle purchases, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. It's a great way to support your channel. If you don't need to purchase tackle, guys, but you want to support the channel, please just hit that subscriber button. It's a great way to help the channel grow, to reach more people, to hopefully help them catch a few more fish as well. All right, so let's talk about these baits. Generally speaking, when you're talking about a good reactionary bait, uh, something that generates strikes from fish that are not actively feeding, you're talking about power fishing, you're talking about baits that have good movement in the water. Sometimes they're loud, brash baits. Uh, and for the most part, they're baits that move pretty quickly through the water column. So the first one I want to talk about here is this guy right here. And this might surprise some of you. This is the uh, Z-Man Chatterbait Elite in the bluegill color. And then I've got it paired up here with the Berkeley Power Stinger in the sungill color. This is one of my all-time favorite color combination specifically in this bait. There is something special about the Chatterbait Elite series. Uh, it's not the jackhammer like everyone talks about, but this is one that a lot of people still use, a lot of people really like, and it has really good movement side to side. I think a lot of that has to do with the head design. It's actually more of a squat flat head versus the uh, jackhammer head, which is more of your minnow shape. And what that does, because it's a flatter bait, a uh, flatter head, it actually might allow it to dart a little bit uh, more side to side. So for me, if I'm looking at working this through grass, working it through uh, maybe some laydowns, I feel like I get much better movement out of this bait. And that movement is what creates those reaction strikes. Now keep in mind, a lot of times the way to get a lethargic fish to bite is to have a bait dart in front of them side to side. So what you want out of a good bait that's gonna create reaction strikes is that quick darting side to side motion. And that's what you get out of this. I really feel like I get more erratic motion out of the Chatterbait Elite series. Now, doesn't mean it's always what I wanna go with, but I really do like it. This specific color, the bluegill color with the sungill trailer is one that does such a good job at mimicking uh, sunfish and bluegills throughout the lake. Now. It really doesn't matter where you're at. I feel like it really fits a good, a good bluegill looking bait throughout the country. For me, this really shines during the pre-spawn period where you start getting a lot of a lot of largemouth moving back into some shallow, mud-filled, weed-filled bays, uh, where you also have a lot of bluegills moving back into those same areas. Cause if you don't know this, both largemouth as well as sunfish or bluegill are part of the sunfish family. They act very similar. So you get a lot of the same 
uh, fish species, bluegill and largemouth, moving into the same areas. And because of that, the bluegill is a primary forage species for the largemouth. So this color generates strikes. I've won uh, a lot of tournaments, not at the professional level, but at the local level using this exact combination. So that's one bait. A, a vibrating jig is potentially the number one bait at generating reaction strikes. The second bait I'm gonna go with here is this guy. This is a half ounce Berkeley Warpig lipless crankbait in the sexier shad color. Nothing super crazy about it, but this bait generates strikes. You guys know that I am a huge fan of throwing lipless crankbaits. The Warpig is definitely one of my favorites. If I could if I could use one, it would be the discontinued Excalibur XRK50, but because that's discontinued, uh, I've been looking hard for the last several years trying to find a good replacement. And this guy right here is definitely one of my absolute favorites. Runs really true, but on a good hard pull or a snap of the rod, it really does a very good job at darting side to side. And if you watch my channel on a regular basis, you know that I don't throw lipless crankbaits generally in a cast retrieve manner. I really like it in a yo-yo retrieve, meaning I cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then I'm snapping my rod, getting that bait to blow up off the bottom, come four or five feet up, and then I let it fall back down. So you have lots of different periods on a retrieve like that to generate reaction strikes. The first is on that initial fall, the bait does a good job at moving back and forth. When it's falling at a fast rate, good time to generate that reaction strike. And then when it's sitting on the bottom and I snap my rod to rip it, that's a good time to generate a reaction strike because it's moving quickly high up in the water column. And then as soon as it drops back down, again, you go through that same cycle. So a lipless to me is an absolute must when you're talking reaction strikes. Now there's a lot of people out there that really only throw this during the pre-spawn. I like to throw it year round. And I really like to fish it year round on ledges and shell bars, places where I can work the bait quickly in a yo-yo manner across a clean bottom. Uh, so even though a lot of people view this more as a grass bait on a place like Gunnersville, I really like to throw it on hard, clean spots. So if I'm up here in the North Country fishing rivers, I love fishing rock banks, riffles, uh, shallow rocky areas with it because I can really get it to come through clean. I can just generate a lot of potential reaction strikes. If I'm down on a ledge lake, like Kentucky Lake, uh, Pickwick, Gunnersville, offshore, and I can find some good clean shell bars or ledges, it's one of my go-to ledge baits. But uh, this guy's sexier shad color and a war pig, absolute great bait at generating reaction strikes. Another whole series of baits uh, that are, again, potentially the best, it deflection and creating reaction strikes are your crankbaits. Now, at the, from a crankbait standpoint, you can have crankbaits that do a great job in two feet of water. You can have crankbaits that do a great job in 20 feet of water. I personally tend to prefer crankbaits that run in that eight to 10 foot range for a couple of reasons. The first, because you have a bait that's diving harder, even if you're fishing in two, three feet of water, that thing is just grinding on the bottom, shooting all over the place. Uh, at the same time, I generally prefer to have crankbaits deflect more and, and create better reactionary movement down to about that 10 foot mark. Meaning you can still do it deeper than that, but a lot of times when you're fishing deeper than that, you're really looking at trying to make contact on the bottom for less periods of times or like deflect off a stump. In that case, I'm going with a bait that really has a better deflection uh, rate versus something that creates a lot of good actual movement in the water column on its own. So from that standpoint, I'm looking at baits that are like the old wiggle wart. One of the best things about the old wiggle warts is they had really good hunting action. And when somebody's talking about a hunting action, it's that movement side to side where the bait will go off center and track back to center and then maybe go up the other way and come back. So it's it's not a bait that runs true all the way back. It's a bait that kind of runs side to side, but continues to find its, its track. 
So a couple of baits that I absolutely love for that are ones, again, you guys have seen me talk about on the channel all the time. Uh, this is a Duo Realis M62 5A. So this bait doesn't run that deep, but this is the red tiger color, absolute killer color. I've talked about how Roy Hawk kind of turned me onto this when I was watching a Lake Martin tournament where he was fishing. I think it was his first Bassmaster Elite Series tournament. He, uh, he almost won the event on it. But this color is one of my absolute favorite colors. It's kind of got a, a good purple shine to it. It's very similar to uh, the Elegy Bone color that Mega Bass has, where that back color is almost like a purple, but sheen, uh, has a shine that goes into blue and pink. Just a killer bait. But this bait just is one that just, it wants to run all over the place on its own. And then when it does deflect off something, it just shoots way off to the side. And it's that quick darting motion that generates really good reaction strikes. So this, for me, is an absolute killer bait again when you're talking about in and around the springtime period. A lot of, lot of big fish up shallow, getting ready to spawn, a lot of big fish in the spawning phase. And then even after, uh, depending on the lake type, I really like it. Uh, been a killer for me on a lot of different lakes. And they have... You know, they have basically that M62, M65, and a couple of different sizes. They're all basically the same bait, just run different depths. The other one that I have really grown to love the last year and a half since it's come out is the Berkeley Money Badger. This is the root beer craw color, one of my absolute favorites. Again, this bait, for the most part, depending on which size you get, generally runs in that 8 to 10 foot range. But this to me is the best bait I've seen since the old school wiggle wart in terms of that hunting action. I mean, this thing will run way off to the left, come back, run off to the right, come back. It doesn't need to even deflect off anything to create that really erratic motion where it just scoots off to the side, which is what generates those reaction strikes. Uh, but this thing has been a really good bait for me in the summer months as well into the fall months before the fish at least up here in the North Country, go to the point of being too deep for me to be able to get this bait to them. But they find they have a really hard time turning this thing down. Uh, caught a lot of really good fish. You can go back, watch a bunch of my old videos, but this is one of my favorite. I love that root beer craw color because it's kind of natural, but still has the chartreuse sides, just kind of screams to the bass to eat them. Generally speaking, a lot of times your best reaction strikes uh, come from brighter colors. Like there's a lot of good colors that generate reactionary uh, movements out of the fish. Chartreuse is one of those really good colors. The last one I want to talk about here is again, one of my favorites. You know, I talk about this on the channel a lot, uh, but it's a swim jig. Just right here, I've got this. Uh, this is a dirty jig swim jig in the uh, Gunnersville shad color paired up with the three and a half inch Berkeley power bait the deal, one of my favorite uh, swim jig trailers. The key with a swim jig is the fact that it's one of the most weedless baits out there. It's meant to be banged into objects. So no matter where or when you're fishing this, you should be trying to deflect it off objects. If you're fishing it through weeds or pads, Bang it off the pad stems, bang it off the tops of the pads, bang it off the top of the weeds that you're bringing it through. If you're bringing it through wood, make sure you clip the edges of wood, bring it up and through the branches. If you're fishing around docks, clink the dock posts with it. The key here is this bait is made to deflect off objects. And when you deflect it off those objects, that's when you get your, your reactionary strikes. So because of the weedless ability of a swim jig, it gives you the, the, great, uh, the great opportunity to deflect it off as many objects as possible. As much as we want to throw a crankbait or say even your vibrating jigs, which have exposed hooks off of all these objects, most of them don't come through cover nearly as well as a swim jig. So it's that weedless tendency of the swim jig to create those reactionary strikes. Uh, absolute great bait. It's another one where you can impart a lot of additional action with your rod tips. But these, these five baits are absolute mainstays for me when it comes to trying to create reactionary strikes out of the fish. So if you've got 
tough conditions, if you got fish that are not active and you got fish that just have like that lock jaw and they're not looking to eat, but you want to force feed them, you got to have a bait that will get them to react to it. And these five baits and these five colors are absolute killers for, for that. So hopefully this helps you guys. I know a lot of you have been reaching out asking about what my favorite reaction baits are, what colors are the best reaction uh, reactionary colors to use. And I'll probably do more videos on this moving forward. It's just one of those things that uh, a lot of it, you can't expect the bait to do it 100%, but these baits do it better than most baits that don't have that crazy action built in. So hopefully this helps you. If it does, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.